Yeah, but that's what kind of where I was trying to touch on earlier in the conversation. I was, you know, nowadays, whether you go on reality TV or not, people accept you as a real artist. But back in them days, no matter how nice you was, it was like, yo, I don't know if we could take these dudes serious because they, they, they didn't come from the streets. They came from reality TV. So right. y'all had backlash, not just from the viewing audience, but from other artists out there that didn't give y'all the props like, nah, I really spit. I really do this. I just happen to be on a reality TV show. Puff told the hood fellas to come at us. Because we we bumped a lot of people. So you got to understand, Black Rob was waiting on his second album. Loon was waiting on his first album. So we kind of like took a lot of attention. But see, we was just pawns in a bigger scheme. Puff was coming off his case. He was trying to revitalize his whole image. Bam, MTV. Like I said, and I mean, it wasn't made for us to win for that show. That show was particularly to revitalize his image. And to show people that, you know, he actually does give a fuck about the next generation coming up. But the way we was hazed, it just didn't sit right with the overall hip hop community. And then they was kind of done with us before we was actually got started. So hence we have me, an East Coast rapper that's trying to prove, 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 plant my flag in New York, which is one of the most hardest markets to, to, to overcome when you when you. And begin a rapper. Because not only are they going by skill, they're going by authenticity. And how much truth is behind these guys' raps. So seeing me in that type of light on reality TV is like, this guy is not really who he say he is because in the raps, he want to kill you. But then he's doing something that another man said to do. They don't understand really the mental fabric that goes into being an artist. Sometimes you have to play leadership. Sometimes you have to play soldier. Sometimes you have to play, you know what I mean? You, it's many hats you have to play. Like sometimes, some days I didn't even rap. My whole day was spent around getting people in the studio, waking people up. So when people say Puff is not talented, that's not true. Because it's talent in managing other people. It's, that's a talent. If I called up 10 niggas right now and told them to meet me at, at the same place at the same time, Maybe four of those ten would actually do do that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to really have talent and mm -hmm. artistry. It's it, it's a big talent in managing people and their artistry and their skill set. Yeah, I mean, um, y'all y'all wasn't easy to manage. I remember those days. We wasn't. Um, we wasn't. Everybody yeah. say like we got fucked over, but we wasn't that. Wasn't that. Um, fucking compliant as a group. We was dysfunctional from the rip. We had a few guys that wanted to actually do it and 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 continue on with the shit. Like we had one album and we got breached the contract before our second album. Like you gotta understand, for everybody was mad at me because I didn't sign a publishing deal, but they really threw another advance and another marketing budget down the drain when they walked away. Yeah, yeah. You got Dylan saying this and Dylan saying that. We gagged him and we he wasn't even part of the group. Throughout the whole fucking process of the fucking show, the nigga wasn't even there to the point where we start getting his money because it was oh, going to, into the pocket of Jason and whoever else was on tour with us. Yeah, we start asking for his money because he wasn't performing and we was actually holding him down, sending his parts to the songs. Okay, so why wasn't he showing so to up? say we was just the fucking angels and darlings of the label, that's not true. We did a lot of fucking over too. Puffy spent two million to bump a lot of other artists to get us to where we was at, and we repaid him by just totally being dysfunctional, missing flights, and and doing. Yeah, he could have did more. We all could have did more. But I'm telling you, the bottom fucking facts is niggas didn't want it as much as they thought they did. When it was time to put the jersey on and really suit up, everybody felt like we we was old more. Or they was treating us like kids. We were kids. We didn't have no leverage. We didn't sell no records. Yeah, see, this is the part of the story. And this is bigger than MTV making the band. It's bigger than your group. It's bigger than Puff. You just said something that's just real. I mean, I hope people pay attention. Everybody say they want it. 
But when it comes to putting in that work, like, like legitimately putting in that work, you come to find out for yourself, I don't want it as much as my mouth say I want it. I'm not saying niggas was nice and niggas didn't want to have a fruitful career in, in music. I'm saying when it comes to the business aspect of music, people are not complying with it. And there's some things that they won't compromise to be in music business. And it's a combination. You can't just take over a block with pure physicality. It has to be a strategy. You have to be a thinker and you have to be a mover and a stepper. A lot of people just okay with being steppers. Some people just okay with being movers. Some people can be people being thinkers. But when you put all these things together, then you unstoppable force. And like, I'm, I'm not saying niggas wasn't nice. They just didn't want to be in the mu music business. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.